Good morning. Good morning. Today I am, uh, first of all, I minister Daryl J. Bennett and I greet you. Um, I, today I, I want to talk about, it's, this is a word of caution, um, about how to prepare for what's coming ahead. Uh, a time of great uncertainty, a time of great instability, and a time of great and widespread accusations. And I, I just, I want to, I want to invite you for the next minutes as I talk to, to rise with me on a spiritual level above personalities, above individuals, above trends that are going on social media right now, above memes, above what is the fodder for the day, and raise yourself to see that there is something bigger afoot so you can prepare yourself. So you can prepare yourself. Now, the minister has been sharing with you over the course of time, probably about two months ago, the minister released to you that America is heading into a time of great extremism. And, 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 and we're not going to we're not even going to touch that right now because I will refer you to that message. Where we spoke about that, that extreme, that it's a spirit of extremism. This, this, I'm not talking about political parties right now. I'm not talking about who goes into the White House, who moves their belongings into the White House. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a spirit of extremism. A spirit which says, if you don't agree with me, then I cancel you and I don't want anything to do with you. A spirit that says, if you don't vote like I vote, pray like I pray, worship how I worship, and talk like I talk, I want nothing to do with you. A spirit that says, we want to freeze frame people at the worst points of their life. We want them to move on, we say, but we want to freeze frame them. So we'll take an incident and we'll magnify it. We'll put it in the media. We'll tell the worst side of the story of it. And we'll keep talking about it for 10, 20, 30 years later. It's a spirit of extremism. You've seen it in politics. You're seeing it play out in the media. You're seeing it play out all around you. If you're older than 30 years old, you can remember a time in America where people were more or less centrist. People more or less had the same agenda. You wanted America to win. Black, white, red, Hispanic, Native American, didn't matter. You, you kind of wanted America to win. You knew that there were issues and struggles and strife. But at the end of the day, people more or less were middle of the road. That was then. This is now. The minister shared with you then that if you're a student of history, you will know that this is not coming out of nowhere. The minister referred you a hundred years ago to what was going on in Germany, to the atmosphere that sowed the seeds for Hitler to come into power. I, the, the minister told you then, and the minister will repeat now, Hitler was not born. He was made. Adolf Hitler was born, as in Adolf Hitler, the government name, but Hitler, the concept, Nazism, extremism of the highest orders that was made. When they were shoving those people in the uh, to ovens, it wasn't Adolf Hitler. It was at his behest and his word, but it took a lot of people who were complicit, who orchestrated it, who thought it was okay, and it took years of preparing the ground. To convince people that these were subhumans, that you could treat them any kind of way. The minister shared with you that you have to be careful about labels. When you start labeling people as anything other than humans and people, then you can start to treat them any kind of way. We call them migrants. We call them felons. We call them handicapped. We call them gay. We call them anything other than what we want to be called, which is human. So when we start using these terms and labels, it's, it's, it's okay for us to treat them any kind of way. Well, it's a migrant. You don't say human. Well, it's a felon. Those in the social ju justice uh, circles, there were some of us that, 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 that joined the fight and, and it took years for legislation to stop calling people inmates. Just call them people. Why? Because as long as you can call people as anything other than humans, then it gives you the right to treat them any kind of way. 
The minister was sharing with you that there was a direct line between what was going on in Germany a hundred years ago and what's taking place now. Didn't one of the presidential candidates tell you that he wanted a united Reich? <laughs> Did he, I mean, that's out of his mouth. I, this, this is not the minister putting things together to make an, a, a, a captivating life. All right. So we talked about it coming into a, a, a time of extremism. Then the minister got on about three weeks ago and shared with you to prepare yourself for massive disclosures. This, this did, let's be clear. This did not come because there's some highly placed source that's feeding information through the telephone. This comes from the spirit of discernment and prophecy where the Holy Spirit said, instruct my people to get prepared. I didn't even know, what was, I didn't know what was all that was taking place, but I knew it was, something was happening. I will refer you to a scripture that says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. That's, that's, that's what's happening now. Everything's being shaken. Trust in systems. You can't trust the banks. You can't trust the political parties. You can't trust who you thought you knew before and who you put on a pedestal or idol. It's, they're coming for your trust. It's a shaking that's happening. And this is the thing. Everything that is taking place, I, I, I truly do believe this. Listen to me here. It is both at the hand of God and at the ministration of demonic work. It's, it's both and that's happening because God's perfect will is going to be done. You do know that the systems of this world will become the systems of our God and his Christ. And it was going to take disruption. It was going to take massive change quickly and imminently. You didn't think the system of usury was going to stand, did you? You didn't think the centuries of blood money from countries that 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 brought imperialism and militarism and uh, uh, disinherited entire generations from wealth. You didn't think that was going to stand with a just God, did you? So it's it's two things at work here. The wheat is coming up, and so are the tares. And I and I, I need my pe this is for people that have an ear to hear. This isn't for everybody. This is not actually. It's not even for most people. I had to become comfortable with that. So he said, how many numbers are on your lives? I'm not concerned about numbers. The Christ had 12 people who were really in his corner. I'm not looking for a lot of people. I'm looking for the right people who have an ear to hear to be prepared. This is not the time to play. The devil is not playing patty cake with you. So, so, so the minister shared to get prepared within 48 hours, actually 24 hours an unprecedented indictment was, was unsealed against a sitting mayor of the largest city in America, in the Western Hemisphere. Let's take, let's take, let's go bigger. Uh, against a city that more than one, listen to this, one out of every four dollars that circulates in the world comes through New York City. So you gotta, you gotta, I need you to make the connection. <laughs> This is, this is, it's, you always got to follow the money. That's why the minister is always talking about money and money systems, because I don't want you to get distracted. I don't want you as the apostle taught us to be unawares. This is, this is, a, this is, this is bigger than about an airline ticket. Okay. This is about people in positions of power to move billions of dollars and perhaps could affect economies that uh, that that touch trillions and 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 this is it's it's bigger it's bigger so minister are you telling me you're defending oh, I'm not, no I'm not def I'm not defending nobody cuz I don't know none of these people I'm not defending anybody I am speaking the word that the spirit put into my mouth and into my heart so that's why we've got to raise ourselves We've got to raise ourselves. I rarely read. I rarely do. On, I rarely read the comments on some of my YouTubes because people can be. You know, sometimes people can be a little weird. And somebody wrote, "Well, I, I hope if they come out with an accusation against someone else, you you would defend them just as strongly." I'm not. I'm not. Who said I was? 
who, who do you think I'm defending? I desire truth in the inward parts. Didn't I tell you? I don't have a side. I have a cause. The cause of justice. Let, let, let justice run down like a mighty rushing stream. I come from the school of Morehouse College that made Dr. King. That's who the minister is. I came out of the institution that bred some of the greatest leaders in the world. You call it Harvard, but it was a breeding ground for leaders, for boldness, for courage. What are you talking about? I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. So the minister is trying to prepare the people of God to be ready for what's coming. I'm from Baltimore. We say if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. You heard? If you stay ready. So today, that, that was all a prepared ground. Today, what the minister wants to share with you is about how to prepare yourself for a season of great instability. You're seeing it. You're seeing it happen. It's the death by a thousand drips. Every day there's another accusation about somebody. Is it true? Is it not true? I don't know. That's not, I don't have a dog in that fight. What I do come to say is you have to be prepared. The first thing that I want to say is this looks eerily like the seeds and the, the, uh, the atmosphere that set the stage for Nazism a hundred years ago in Europe. Anybody that's a student of history will tell you it looks exactly like it. It looks exactly like it. Now, we may not want to see it. <laughs> we may not want to see it. We may not want to call a thing a thing. But I'm, but I'm telling you, this is what it was. Let me let's step back for a second. Let's step back. Let's 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 walk into what Germany was like then. In Europe, there was great economic instability. That's kind of how it starts. When you start dealing with people, when you start shaking up people's money, people start acting weird. It was great economic instability. And because of the economic instability, people needed someone to blame. People needed someone to blame. So it was the Jews. It was this group of people who they felt like you control the banks. You don't even know that the word jewelry, the root word is Jew. That was a dig. I'm going to teach today. I'm going to teach today. I'm not just going to speak and minister. I'm going to teach. The word jewelry, the root word is Jew. That comes out of Nazi Germany. Because what they were, and maybe a little before Nazi Germany, but in that era. Because there was a dig saying these are the only people that have it. They're taking your gold. They're taking your jobs. <laughs> no, I'm saying what they said. I'm not talking about now. I'm not talking about now. I'm not talking about now. Because I know you lose half the people on your on your timeline if you start talking about now because they think you're talking about a person now. No, no, I'm talking about then. I'm talking about then. Because Hitler was elected. Let's be very clear. 85% of Jews who could vote did vote for him. Yeah, people don't like to talk about that. Because what folks said is, he's a crackpot in some of his racial theories, but he couldn't really do half the things he wanted to do. But he wrote a book about it, and he told you what he was going to do. And then when people did what they said they were going to do, then everybody acts surprised. This is why you got to listen to people. When people tell you who you are, who they are, you got to believe them. They may not get it done, but they're telling you their intentions. So they said that, you know, the, the, the Jews were taking the money. They were taking the gold. They were taking the banks. They were taking the good, everything. They were taking the fat of the land. It was one leader. It's another part of the world. But he was talking about them. And he said, he said, I had a dream that they were milking the cow and weren't feeding it. <laughs> so it was a lot of this sort of thing going on. It was a lot of innuendos. It was a lot of. It was like, and they're not, hold on, hold on. So it was economic instability and there was a lot of, there was a lot of religious fervor. We need to talk about that too. There was a lot of religious fervor because these Jews did not like us. 
you know, they go around with these yarmulkes, they wear it, you know, and they have this strange religion and they're doing all of these, you know. So, so, so the, the first thing was to otherize them. Put a stamp on their passport. Huh? They're doing that now in America. They're doing that now. They say, oh, but if you have a legal issue, we want to we want to just alert people when you go into another country. That's what they did with the Jews a hundred years ago. It's, it's no different. They 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 would they would they would uh, put identifiers because they their thing was they wanted to see before this is the thing before you can really really do something wrong to people you have to otherize them and you're not going to get it done over the course of a year or a month or one television program it's going to take time it's going to take time it's going to take time of they're really not like us they really don't deserve to be here they immigrated here. That was a lot of the story too. Some of them had been in those countries for five, six, seven, 10, 11, 12, 20 generations. You go to, you'll go to, you'll, you'll go to my Instagram and you'll see one of the castles that I had the opportunity to visit, a beautiful opulent castle. And I asked about the history and the short history is they said, oh, they were Jews. And when they saw what was taking place, they got up and left. They had to leave. They had to leave everything. That was in France. That wasn't even Germany. Because that's another thing. I know Germany gets all of the hate for what they did with the Jews, but it didn't start there. You cannot think that one leader from a series of speeches is going to get millions of people to be complicit in the destruction of millions more unless there's a lot of other hands that are at play. So, so the stage was set. There was war. There was rumors of war. There was this sense of, we've got to return to our, I'm back in Germany now. We've got to return to our national pride. See, people, people are funny when they start talking about pride for na their nation. Sometimes what it means is, sometimes, it's not all the time, but sometimes pride for nation is a code term for we need to go back to ethnically the way we thought it used to look and how it should look. So, so they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll say, I'm back here now. They'll say, God bless America. Uh huh. And nowhere else. But you've got to be careful with that. They'll say God bless America in a church. But is that what Jesus would say or would Jesus say God bless people? You, you see. So 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 this and this is so this is what was going on. It was a lot of religious fervor, economic instability, nationalism. And, and 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 then enters. Hold on. And then enters very eloquent people that could play on the fears of people. Not just not just the hopes of people. I, I, we're not talking about that. Not just the hopes of people. Not just the nostalgia of people for a time that was. No, the fears of people. The fear of if you don't do something now, your nation is going to be taken away from you. Uh huh. Sounds like the Pharisees a little bit, right? If we don't do something about this wave, if we don't do something about this change, if we don't do something about this this disruption, no matter it might be God, no matter it might be the Holy Spirit orchestrating it, but if we don't do something about it, they're going to take away our place and they'll take away our nation. So it was the seeds were ripe for a strong man to rise up. And say, now is the time for us to do everything that was in our heart to do. Now, let me tell you where America is a little bit different. America is different because we don't have one strong man. We have a spirit of strong man. It's a spirit. It's entire systems, you see. It's entire systems that are complicit with, with, with otherizing people. Got to be careful about that. With creating this fear about this economic stability, instability, you know, because it used to be before only, you know, 100 years ago, it was only the well-to-do people who were in the so-called stock market commodities. Now everybody's in it. And that and that 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 plays on people that plays on people. Right. You, you're hearing it in politics. We don't we don't care if the person says this or that or is pretty much mimicking the words of a demon as long as they can help the economy get better. So you got to be you got to be careful. I'm just saying you got to be careful. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm going to get to that in a second because I think the whole system needs to change. <laughs> you know, it, the whole system needs to change. So this isn't about that. 
Trust me, it's not about that. But this is about raising your mind to say, what are you really, what are you really, really saying? Have you made money your God? Maybe you haven't, but the nation has. Don't you get it twisted. The God of this world is mammon. Let me tell you why you know how powerful it is. The Christ taught us you can't serve God and mammon. He didn't say God and demons, God and the devil, because there's a spirit on the earth that's stronger than the devil. And that's mammon. That's money. You start messing with people's money, people get funny. <laughs> you start messing with people's money, people will align themselves with all types of crackpots and crackpipe theories because the money ain't right. That's exactly what was going on 100 years ago. I'm just, I'm just here to, to just, I'm just, I used to teach history. Right. I used to teach history. So this is history is my love. I know law school is where I landed in grad school, but history is my, my, my major in college. I love history because history tells us something about destiny. It does. It does. History tells us something about destiny. And this is exactly where Germany was 100 years ago. This is exactly where Europe was 100 years ago. This is this is exactly where they were. So how do we how do we uh, uh, there was a man who said we're living in a sea of human meanness and 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 wild denunciations. You know who said that? Adolf Hitler. He said that when he was first starting to rise in politics because he seemed to be the savior. He seemed to be the savior. So what am I trying to what, what am I trying to tell you how to prepare yourself? Great instability. So I was I was watching the other day and Hold on, excuse me. Let me pause. You know how they say trigger warning. Raise yourself with me here. Raise yourself for what I'm about to say. We've got, to, we've got to come to a high level. The words I give you are not flesh. They're spirit and life, okay? Let me go. They said, we're about to release... Uh, uh, it was a lawyer in Texas. 120 victims who are uh, releasing lawsuits uh, against, you know who I'm talking about, against this man who's now had all these other issues going on with him. It's 120 lawsuits, and you're going to start hearing household names. You're going you're, you're to hear people that you never thought would do this, and, and we're naming them in the lawsuit. And I said as I sat back, okay, right? So the, my first thought when I went to that is, Lord, let truth prevail. Again, raise yourself. I'm not here to defend nobody. And I never put anything past anyone because people are capable of doing all types of things when situations arise. I absolutely believe that. But what I also believe is you got to be very careful about taking for the gospel what any person just says. So, so, so we're living in a time, we're living in a time, that's why I, I referred you to Adolf Hitler's words, which was a sea of, you call it a sea of human meanness and mass denunciations. And that was a hundred years ago about, it was about a hundred years ago, give or take 10 years, right? But before World War II, before he got exposed for who he was, but he was a prophet despite himself. That's what allowed him to rise up. Mass accusations. That's where we're at now. You can say anything about anybody at any time, and it's stuck on their jacket, in some cases, for life. You got to be careful about that. Okay, so it's going to be a lawsuit. You, if these uh, horrible, disturbing, despicable things happen to you, absolutely move forward with it. Just let truth prevail. And, and you know, how, I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. You know how you can prepare yourself? Don't get emotionally involved with it. Don't tweet about it. Don't post on it. Don't get yourself caught up in something that might not be exactly what you think it is. They said it was a thousand bottles of baby oil found. Raise yourself, what I'm about to say. Raise yourself, okay? Because we got to, I got to speak on this. The minister needs to speak on this. A thousand bottles of baby oil, but they ain't show you no pictures of nothing. So what, you just get to throw something out and everybody runs with it? Because that, if you think about it, that that prosecutor and a very intelligent man, you can tell, he spoke for an hour. The thing that everybody ran with was not the thing that was given more evidence. They showed evidence for other things. It was a thousand, a thousand, thousand bottles of baby oil. And who has a thousand, right? Maybe you got a thousand and ten. Maybe you got 940. Maybe it looks like a thousand, but exactly a thousand. But that's a soundbite that just went 
running around the world. I was walking into my hotel in, the, in a border town in France. We're not talking Paris. And the guy says, oh, you, you hear about you hear about P. Diddy? And I'm like, I don't even, I guess because of how I look and he thinks I know everybody does. I said, well, yeah, yeah. He was like, baby oil, huh? And he just starts laughing. That soundbite made it all around the world. Now, this is the thing. It's funny when it's somebody else, but what about when it's you? I'm not talking about this man. I'm really not talking about this. I'm not defending nobody. What I'm saying is <laughs> the old church mothers had a saying, it's T when it's somebody else, but when it's you, it's a testimony. So if you can take a sitting mayor, if you can take a man who used to be a billionaire, and you can kind of say whatever you want at any time, at any point, and people just run with it, what do you think you have to look forward to in your children, in your grandchildren? So you got to be careful about the, the, the sound bite that comes on the six o'clock news and you're so ready to test, test, test. You got to be careful about that. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you how to prepare yourself. Let me tell you, Gamalu said this. That was the teacher of Paul. We always hear about Paul, the great apostle, but his teacher, his, the, the one who, 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 who instructed him, who educated him, who raised him up and thought was Gamalu. And Gamalu said, this is what he said at the tribunal because it was some things going on. There was some things being said and he didn't feel comfortable with it. And he wasn't defending one side or the other. You got to read that. It was in the book of Acts, I believe. And this is what he said. He stood up in the middle and he said, look, if it's a man, it's going to crumble on its own. But if it's a God, I might, I, you might be opposing God. I have been a public speaker on some level or another since I was 18 years old. And it is no secret that I went through legal challenges at some point and I went through my own personal struggles. But I'm bringing this point up that for 18 years, excuse, since I was 18 years old, I've had a public platform. I challenge you ever to find one time where I use my platform to tear people down. I don't do that. Now, I may have defended something that you did not like but I didn't, I didn't, I don't have the ministry of condemnation. I don't. I'm going to let, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let the judge that's assigned to that case, who's, who, who is grace for that. I'm going to let the prosecutor and I'm going to let the defense attorney to deal with that. Now I might speak up to defend something, but I'm not the one. I don't be calling for people's resignation. I don't be the one talking about, did you see this? Some people, their whole YouTube channel, that's the, that's all they do. Did you? Girl, did you hear what's going on? Tea time with such and such and so. Yeah, okay. You're getting views, you're getting likes, you're getting clicks. But be very careful. Now, when it boomerangs on you, because it will, it's a spiritual energy. You cannot, every time you put something out to the world, I'm teaching you now, it's, it's, it's always marked with the stamp of return to sender. It's going to come back. Let me tell you sometimes how it comes back. I got a lady that I know, right? Bless her heart. You know, whenever you say, you know, whenever, you know, whenever people like us say, bless her heart, you know, we're going somewhere. Uh, as the older folks would say, well to do white woman, you know, very well to do, well to do family. Well, she's struggling because her dear son, who's 1920, was accused of some things at a party. And she comes to me and says, I can't believe that they could just say anything. And now he hasn't even, they didn't, they didn't even charge him with anything. But they're putting this stuff on there. And they're talking about kicking him out of the school. And this is going to follow him for the rest of his life. And I'm sitting here, I'm trying to look sympathetic. I really am. But I'm thinking in the back of my mind, you don't say. Were you See, when it, when it wasn't your son, but it was somebody else. And it was on the news or it was on the internet channel. It was something else. You were the, you were the quickest one. Hang him high. Oh, they did what? They were accused of doing what? Those type of people shouldn't even live. Now when it's your son, you're ready to get into the ministry of nuance. <laughs> you see? And that's what life will do. It'll take you from the prosecutor to the defendant, just like that. So now she's spending her money and she's trying to get the best attorneys to protect her son. Because she said, I just can't believe this. There were 20 people at the party and one person, one person says this. And I'm, and I'm sitting here thinking, people have gone down for lesser. You're concerned about him getting a job. Some people, because of the same accusations, are sitting behind bars for life. Others have been lynched. Let's, let's talk about it. But now that it's happened to you, 
You see, now that you have been touched by the infirmity, now you've become the patron saint for internet privacy. Because she said, you know, and this stuff never gets erased. Really? I thought you were the one two, three years ago who was looking at what stuff, what other people were going through and posting that and sending that around talking about, I don't think they should work at that job. Now that it's your son, now that it's your baby boy with the, with, with the, with the, with the beautiful uh, curly blonde hair and the bright blue eyes. And now that it's putting him at risk, you look back and you think maybe everything isn't what I thought it was. That's where we're at now. So you got to prepare yourself. You got to put on your seatbelt. You got to be cognizant about throwing things out about other people. You got to be careful about using your platform and your energy and your thought patterns to make mean, nasty comments about things you know not of. I don't know if it's a thousand bottles of baby oil, but this is what I do know. I never met that man. I've never been in that house. I was never invited to any other parties. And so I don't have, I don't, I can't speak on that. Now, if you were there, if you were affected by it, hey, and you feel like you want to speak on it, speak on it. But if you don't have anything to do with it, let me give you another example. This is on another level. I posted a video of me uh, showing people how to open a Swiss bank account on TikTok. And I will read the comments sometimes from there because it's a younger audience and I'm just interested in what people have to say. So people are going wild in the comments. You know, you open a Swiss bank account, the feds can come after you and you shouldn't do this. And I, I heard this about that and Swiss bank accounts that you got all of these experts. And I'm sitting there thinking, how many of you even have a passport? I know you have an open one because if you did, that would be your first line to say, well, I open one too. And I wouldn't do this, this or that. But so my point is you got all of this stuff to say and you don't even know. You can't even put, if I put a map in front of you and told you point to Switzerland, you couldn't. Yet, you've got a lot to say in the comments. Why? Shut up about what you don't know. Stop being the teacher and be the student. This is what I'm telling you. And so I'm making the analogy to life. So you talk about things you don't know. I'm telling you, I'm trying to tell you how to prepare yourself for great instability. Don't give your energy there. Don't get emotionally invested. I know the algorithm is going to keep putting it in front of you. And I'm not talking about not being informed. So I'm an advocate. I still do law work, right? I do a lot of legal consulting. I connect people with attorneys. I love that space. So I want to be informed, but I can't be inundated. I heard the story already. I don't need to hear 20 people talk about the story. I don't need to hear, I don't need 30 things coming to my feed to say, okay, well, this person said this, and let's talk about with this person, let's talk about with that person. So I don't, I don't need that. You got to decide when does informed become inundated. You got to decide when are you talking about something to just kind of have a discussion if you feel like you need to have a discussion, and when you're helping to spread lies and per, per, what could, excuse me, what excuse me, what could be lies and gossips. You don't escape from that. You don't get to escape from that. This is this is why you have when the, the I don't think people have so much an issue when you hear about pastors, some pastors, let me be clear, but some of the pastors who you find who might have some sexual improclivities. I'm not talking about what mine is. I'm just talking about they, they got a, a wife on the side and they got a man or whatever. And I think the reason why some people are so outraged is because for some of them, you spent your whole career castigating these people. Right. People don't like that. And if you think people don't like it, what do you think the spiritual energy that you're putting out around you? That's a whole nother thing. I, I had a pastor that once said, you want to know what's bothering another pastor and what they're struggling with. Listen to what they preach against. <laughs> so that's, I don't even want to touch that because because now I'm not just talking about pastors. I'm talking about people in general. So your whole platform is about trying to go get predators and people who are preying on children. I'm concerned about people like that. That's your whole energy. So what are you, either what are you doing or where is your mind space at? I'm doing this because I'm a dad. Okay, so how, do, how does that show up in your life as a father of tender young children when your whole energy is about looking at all of these things and you, because this is the, this is, this, and trying to stop all these other things. You can't stop what you're energetically invested in. That's why I don't speak against things. I speak for it. You see, because what you resist, thank you, Carl Jung, what you resist, thank you, Carl Jung, what you resist, thank you, Carl Jung, because this is so powerful, what you resist persists. 
So how do you prepare yourself for great instability? Be careful about what you're consistently talking about. Be careful of your information diet. Be careful of what you let get in your spirit. Be careful of what you're, re whoo, whoo, what you're reposting. What you're reposting. Oh, no, 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 no. You, it, it may not be illegal to repost it. I'm not saying that. <laughs> But it may not be advisable because, because the minister is teaching you spiritually. Because spiritually, you're putting something out into the world. How would you feel if that was your child or your brother or your son or your mother? Well, they're not. They're all, but I'm just asking, how would you feel? Just go with me to that land. What if? What if everything that's being said is being twisted? What if? I'm not saying it is. And it probably is not. You have so many people saying different things, but when you have so many people saying different things, what you do know is you're going to get some sauce. <laughs> Everything is not going to be exactly what people say because you know how we do as people. You know, you know how we do. We even tell a story. Yeah, because I told that person off and I told them, you say this to me again. I'm a dot, dot, dot. And, and when we play back the tape, you weren't nearly as courageous. You were, you were courageous telling the story, but you didn't say none of that to them at their face like that in that energy. Because that's what we do. When we get emboldened, we say more things. We add stuff to it. And what I'm trying to do is prepare for a time of great accusations. Because I do think it's concerning. They say, well, you know, you, you got household names. Okay, so what does that look like? What does that look like? So what does that look like? What is that? Again, I don't know any of these people, but I'm just I'm just asking because a diminisher just wants to ask a question. What does it look like? So now somebody tells a story. This happened to me 20 years ago. This happened to me two years ago. Right. And this person was in the room. Do I just run with that without some evidence? No, I'm not talking about evidence because a prosecutor stands up and says what they're going to say. I'm talking about evidence that. That my, my mother used to always say, and I, and, you know, mama was smart on this one. Believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. I, 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 evidence. I'm talking evidence. Right? We got a video of them doing A, B, C, and D. No, no, no. Don't tell me about the video. Don't tell me about the video because I don't trust that. I'm talking about evidence. I'm talking about actual things that we can put our fingers on. And that leads me to believe, leads you to say, because of course you're going to say, well, they couldn't release a video. But what do you really know that you're not there to personally witness? Have you ever been in a room about something? I'm not talking about something that deep. I'm just talking in general. Raise yourself with me here. Have you ever had an experience that didn't really, you experienced it that way, but it was 10 other people that were there and they said, that, that didn't what happened. It happens all the time. I, I had this issue when I talked to some of my friends from college. We'll reminisce about something. They're like, they're all that. We weren't there. I'm like, we weren't there when such and such and so said that. You remember when he crashed that car? We were down, as I told you, I went to Morehouse from college. We were down on Peachtree. No, Daryl. We were around the corner from Morehouse. We were around the corner. Don't you remember? Because when we got out the car, we had to call the police to come, and we wouldn't have been able to call if we were down at Peachtree. No, nah, man, you're wrong. We're at Peachtree. And here we all are going back and forth and arguing because we were all there, but we all saw it different. That's life. So if I was there and I could get it wrong, you hear what I'm trying to say? How could I, from where I sit, be so quick to just dismiss people and run with it because somebody said something? And like I said, it's T when it's somebody else. It's T when it's the celebrity. It's T when it's the person that maybe you didn't like anyway because they rubbed you wrong. You didn't really like them anyway. So you thought they needed to be taken down a notch. But what about now when it's your child who, done, who doesn't have $50 million to put up for a bail package? Because they're, they, they're showing you how it can look. They, 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 said to them, they said about the mayor, you don't, you don't have to resign. Don't worry about it. We're going to keep releasing things. We're going to keep, we're going to, and th then they release, we're about to add, we're going to add more charges. It's likely. Maybe so, maybe not. We're just going to keep everybody in the state of limbo. If they'll do that with people who have powerful attorneys and teams of lawyers and maybe guilty of sin, but I'm just giving you the point. I'm giving you the point. If it'll happen there, you should close your mouth before you're so quick to make a judgment because you don't stand a darn chance. I told you I'm in the legal field and I got somebody to say, yeah, I was taught. If you do wrong, you, you ought to have money for a lawyer. I got $30,000. Uh, 
set aside. I looked at him and said, what 30,000 gonna do? Huh? What is that? Listen to me, sir. I'm not talking about what the other people in jail told you. I'm talking, I'm now talking to you as, as a, as someone trained in the law and as a licensed attorney, 30,000 ain't going to get you nowhere if they really are coming for you. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. You got to be careful about throwing stones when you live in a glass house. And we all live in a glass house. We all have some things about our life that if it was told that it could be misconstrued. I'm not going to say that we all have something in our life that we're doing something that's amiss. I'm not saying that, but I'm going to go far enough to say, and I do believe this, that if it was told a different way, it's all about how they tell a story. People would look at you with the side eye. So go back to the woman that's now become the patron saint for internet privacy and uh, giving people a second chance and all this other stuff that she wasn't that before about her son, Right? Her whole thing is they're not telling it. The way they're telling the story makes my child look like some predator. And I'm like, well, but that, I mean, ma'am, that's how it goes because everybody eats off of it. The prosecutor needs to do that to win a conviction. They're not, they're not, this is not a search for truth. This is a search for conviction. So someone can move up in their career, maybe go into politics afterwards. That's what you see now, right? The person that's running, this is a person running. This is what, I want to give equal, equal air time to both. Right. I said some things about the, on the Republican side. So the person on the Democratic side, they made their whole career prosecuting people. Proud of it. Proud of it. This is what I do. I put people in cages. <laughs> I do this. Right. So do you do you think do you think if they keep losing cases, do you think even if they do see something that could be we call it exculpatory, which is another word for meaning that could tend to show the innocence of their client? Do you think they'll come out and be so quick to say that when their career may be on the line, their job is on the line, their their reputation is on the line? This isn't this is now about reputations. This is the one that gets to say, I took down the mayor. I, I did it. That's how Rudy Giuliani rose to power. A lot of people don't remember that. Rudy Giuliani rose to power by being pretty much the godfather of the creative interpretation of the RICO Act. And he used it against the five families. Nobody was doing that before. Nobody thought RICO could be used the way it could be used, but he was head of the Southern District of New York. He had his eye on being mayor. And so he used that, the latest say, I took down the five families. Now, it's funny, right? Remember I told you how you go from the being the prosecutor to the defendant? Where is he now? Huh? Where is he now? Because that energy boomerangs. I'm trying... I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. Where is he now? <laughs> and where will he be in two or three years? <laughs> so, so, so as I come to a close, how do we prepare ourselves? One, we don't keep getting emotionally invested in it. Two, we recognize that the only person that really knows what happened in any of these situations is God. Okay, I'll add God and the people who were there who are willing to be open to the truth of things that transpired. That's probably not you. Because according to your own admissions, you don't you probably don't know any of these people. You weren't even close to these people. You probably don't even know somebody that knows them. <laughs> so why why get involved with it? Why take the chance of, as my friend once said, being a con to God's pro? Why even take that chance? See it's, a, see, it's a spiritual energy in that. Remember the guy that ran, a lot of people don't talk about this, but I need to talk about this. Y'all know Saul was trying to kill David. I'm talking in the scriptures now. And Saul fell on his sword. He asked his, his, his armor bearer to kill him. His armor bearer wouldn't. He's in the middle of a battle. So he falls on his sword, like literally kills himself. So this man runs to David <laughs> And says, I, because what he did was, he was like, they call him, um, they were the people that would, um, what am I trying to say? I don't know the word. They're kind of like human scavengers, right? After the battle was over, they go and grab stuff off of people, you know, jewelry and swords or, you know, anything worth value. They were looters, but they were looters after the people, you know, after the battle was over. So what happens is this man gets soul sword. And I think he takes, he gets something else of Saul, maybe a helmet, I don't know, but I know he gets a sword. And he runs to David with a story and he tells David, now he's lying. He's not even being truthful. He tells David, look at what I, I killed. I killed Saul, 
right? Because he's thinking by telling David, because I killed your adversary, you, you, you're going to put, there's going to be some favor on me. He says, I, I, killed, I killed Saul. And this is the sword to prove it. And David said, you weren't afraid to touch the Lord's anointed? And he had him killed on the spot. Later to find out, he didn't even do it. But he said, according to your own words. Because even if you didn't do it, the, you, you would have the audacity to speak against God's anointed. Darrell, are you saying, hold, hold, are you saying this person's anointed, that person's anointed? I'm saying I don't know. So because I don't, because I don't know, I don't want to roll the dice. That's what I'm telling you. Because I don't know who's anointed and who's not. Because I don't know who God has his hand on and doesn't. I, 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 because I don't know that. I don't want to roll the dice. And because it's a tantalizing video that came across my social media feed, I don't want to be in the energetic vibration of, of even disseminating that for fear. <laughs> See, the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. For fear that I might have offended God. Not, I'm not talking about offending you. I can offend you and still go to sleep. Okay, I can I can offend you and still be fine. I, 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 may, I, I may need to get right with you eventually because you're my brother, but I don't want to offend God because I don't know who's God's anointed. And I'm going to tell you something respectfully, brother, sister, friend, cousin, mother, who uncle, whoever's listening to me, you don't know either. And because you don't know, you bet to be super careful. We're heading into a time where people are going to say anything about anybody at any time. And you have got to prepare yourself. And let me tell you something. I don't care what they're accused of. If you have children, you really need to shut up. I'm telling you, you do. I'm telling you, you do. I'm telling you, you do. In this world where children have so much access to everything from the internet to all the things that, that I mean, children are into a lot of stuff now. I mean, let's... Let's call it what it is. And I'm not talking eight, nine, but I'm talking 14. 14, they're more advanced than we were at 14. You know, you had a gaming console and you had to go outside to do this, this, and that. Now you got 14 year olds that's running whole scams cross country because they can through their phone. You got to be careful. You got young boys, right? And they, 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 unless. Unless it's the second coming, they probably will get drunk at one time. They probably will be at a party at one point. There might be some things happening at the party. And the difference, between, let me tell you something. It's the story that a person tells and the discretion of whoever may be in power, the difference between it being, uh, I want to be respectful here, it being uh, a, a bunch of Girls and guys, and I say girls and guys, teenagers experimenting and you actually perpetrating a whole offense. The difference between that is what one person thinks or how they want to run the story. Oh, you were in the room? You drove the person there? You don't have to be, you don't always have to be the one that's doing the deed. Trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm in I'm I'm in the room where people where working with the defense teams of some of the people that are that are working with going through this right now. They just drove the person. Oh, but you drove this person knowing that they were gonna assault this person. I didn't know they were gonna assault them. I knew I I knew that he liked her, but I wasn't no, so now you're a facilitator of I know you can't say the R, but of the R word. Now people want to get into nuance. Well, that's not the same thing, but it doesn't matter. They want to, they're going to, they're going to, they're, they're going to come for your neck and you don't have nobody to be upset about, but you who created this spiritual energy of throwing out judgments before you know what's really going on and you never know what's going on. The judge don't even know what's going on. That's why the judge really has to lean into discernment. The judge don't even know what's going on because you're getting a report from the prosecutor. You're getting the word of the defendant and the defense attorney. Everybody's going to sway it the way they want it to be swayed. Law enforcement's got their own agenda, right? Every, everybody's going to say what they want. And so when you, when you connect, I'm coming to a close. When you connect the ability to say anything at any time, the fact that there's a digital footprint that sticks with people through their personal careers, through their professional careers, through their business ventures, right? And the fact that it's so easy now Right? To just say something. To just say something. Because that's the third point. It's just easy. It's easy. Oh, I was at 
I was at one of the parties and they said, and this, and this person did this and that person did that. Okay, but how do we verify that? I need to at least know that you were there. Let's, 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 let's verify that first. <laughs> before we go any, before we go any further than that, I'm not just going to believe because you fervently told a story on the internet that these things occur. I'm not saying that they didn't. All I'm saying is when you look at things from a critical eye, which I know is hard because, because what happens is when people talk about certain, uh, certain types of acts and crimes, it, it's, it, it reason goes out the window and it becomes sensationalized. And, and I'm here to tell you, you got to be a little careful with that. That's when you have to have more critical thinking. If you really consider what I'm saying, that when, when, the, when the crime being accused is more harsh, you need to be and more so-called egregious. That's when you really need to be a critical thinker. But we can do the opposite. You know, it's a white collar crime. Then it's like, yeah, we, we'll give all types of scrutiny to that. They sent money here. They sent money there. Yeah, yeah, we'll give all types of scrutiny to that. When it's certain crimes, especially it's involving sex, you start talking. You start talking about minors. People are just like just lock, throw them, lock them up, throw away the key. We'll talk about it later. And I'm saying that's when you have to have more of a critical eye on it, right? That's when you need to really put on your thinking cap. What's really going on? And you still might end up at the end of all the thought and reasoning, saying this person did these things. And I'm talking about now if you're in a position of power. Right, whether it's a lawyer, a judge, or something like that, I get that. But at least let's 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 go further. It's like the death penalty, for instance. In the death penalty, uh, with the death penalty, I, don't, I forget the law that was passed, but you automatically get a second. You automatically get an appeal. Everything else, every other case. I mean, no matter what else people are charged of, they may not get an appeal. Which is why sometimes it works for the person's favor to have gotten sentenced to death because now they would get a second review automatically. What am I saying here? Because the framers of that law intended that the death penalty is such a harsh punishment. We want to be extra careful. Still, you see how it come out on the end of it. We still end up putting people to death you shouldn't be putting to death. But it's just the point I'm trying to make, right? When we go up the scale of how bad the crime seems to be. That's what we really need to get. Okay, I understand. You're gonna you're gonna talk about these tapes of the cows go home and everybody that's on the tapes. But when will there be some level of proof that this is actually occurring? Because I don't scratch when nothing's itching, and I would encourage you not to scratch when nothing's itching, and I would encourage you not to take anything but a gospel just because someone said it. This is where I close. The word has told us that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Get prepared. Get prepared for a time and a space and a place where you have to be super discerning. This is the time to be discerning. Some things on your social media, because I know it's a big part of our lives, some things you probably shouldn't give any attention to at all. Some things. Because even if it is true, hold on, hold on, hold on, come with me for a second. Even if it is true, maybe it's triggering. Maybe it's going to bring a side of you out that you don't even need to hear. Or that you don't, that you don't need to see in yourself. Even if it is all true, if it causes you at the end of the video to feel angry, to go back to a place that you came out of, Right? Whether it was physically, emotionally, financially, psychologically, is that really doing you good? So sometimes the question for whether or not you should engage with it isn't even about is it true? That's not even, that may be the first inquiry, but I wouldn't stop there. Is it edifying? Is it empowering? This is the minister talking to you now. Is it empowering? Is it upliftment? Is it a celebration of human life? If you had more of that in your life, would it help expand you and your family? Is it wealth building? Is it creational and innovational? Is it abounding? 
Is it lovely? Think on these things. Isn't that what, isn't that what the Think on these things that are lovely, that are high-minded, that are of good report. Or does it bring you back to an angry, resentful, bitter, rageful place? Don't even set yourself up for failure. And I'm going to teach you a little secret here. If you feel like I really need to be informed, read about it. You don't even need to watch it. Read about it. Just read about it. Just reading the same story doesn't give you the same emotional connection than watching it. Because when you, when, you, when you watch it, your subconscious gets involved in a way with images and video that, you're, you're, that, that is not the case when you're reading it on print paper. So now you got the sounds. Now you got all these other pieces. And the enemy is using that to steal, kill, and destroy from your life. And so how bad would it be if uh, after all that you said about them, maybe they go down, maybe they don't go down, but then you end up being energetically pulled down to a space that you never even had to be pulled down to. I love you. That's why I'm sharing this. It's a word of caution. It's for he that has an ear, let him hear. All right, y'all, write me. Engage with me. If this blessed your heart, write me. If it didn't bless your heart, I don't, I don't need to hear about it. See? I'm modeling for you what I'm telling you. Because I don't want to get it. I don't get energetically involved with nastiness. It's just no need to. <laughs> if you don't like it, you, like they used to say, the television has, has an off button. Your phone has an off button. But, um... If this has blessed you, and of course, if you are looking for someone to come speak at your organization, at your congregation, at your university, at your company, you need to reach out to the minister. I have a great team that's going to that's, that'll engage with you and work with you so that way we can make this happen. There's a prophetic word in my mouth to lift the nations to transform communities, to uplift souls, to change dynamics, to enhance self-image, to move people into a higher level of destiny. The spirit of the Lord is on me and has anointed me to do this work. I'm not just gifted. Let me be clear. I'm not just gifted to do this. I'm anointed to do it. And I have the education. I've got the lived experience. And I've got the professional background to back it. I love you. As always, stay blessed. Stay prosperous. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stay prosperous. Stay abundant. And may the God of all peace be with you.